Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. Not only have I been the owner of Mint Mobile for the last few years, I've also been a customer. I don't know if you knew this, but anyone can get the same premium wireless for $15 a month plan that I've been enjoying. It's not just for celebrities, so do like I did and have one of your assistant's assistants switch you to Mint Mobile today. I'm told it's super easy to do at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Food Heals Podcast, episode 250. I want to hear the Mexico story. I want to hear the hiking story. (laughs) I will talk about poop in our relationship and you just need to be okay with it. (laughs) I'm like serious journalist. <laughs> oh, but I rap. It's fine. <laughs> How bad could it be to die from a skydiving accident? You die in bliss. I don't know about that. <laughs> Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to change their status update from hashtag blessed to hashtag OMG even more blessed than yesterday, hashtag loving life. If you've experienced any of these symptoms, make sure to tweet a Kardashian immediately. All right. Welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. Today is part one of a three-part special travel series. I've got three fierce females in the studio, and we're sharing some of our favorite travel stories as well as tasting some organic vegan wines. Thanks to Alicia from Scout and Cellar for sending those along. Next week, my roundtable and I are joined by vegan chef Leslie Durso, and we'll get into some healthy, vegan, time-saving, energy-boosting travel tips and tricks. And then in the third and final installment of our travel series, I will be taking Food Heals Nation on a journey with me to veganize Puerto Rico. In the studio today, we've got vegan YouTube star, online business specialist, and healthy living crusader, it's eco-vegan gal, Whitney Lauritsen. Plus, we've got award-winning broadcast journalist and host of the Newsworthy podcast, all the day's news you need to know in 10 minutes or less, Erica Mandy. And we've got plant-based personal chef and healthy living enthusiast and educator, Melissa Glashevsky. Next up, our travel stories and vegan wine with Whitney, Erica, and Melissa. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. All right. Welcome, Food Hills Nation. I'm so excited to be here with literally three of my favorite people. I already introduced them, but I'll just let them go around and say hi really quick. Uh, What's up, Whitney? I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. Hey, Melissa. What's up, Allie? (laughs) (laughs) Melissa's had one glass of wine. She's good to go. (laughs) Let's have some more. (laughs) All right. Welcome, Erica. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Okay, guys. So um, today we're really excited to talk about our favorite healthy travel tips. But first, Scout and Cellar, my new besties from Instagram, sent us some wines to taste. They're all organic, biodynamic, and vegan. Who's ready to taste? I am, for sure. Me too. Heck yeah. Okay, so let's start with this. Um, Okay, Etnico Grand Reserva Chardonnay. I enjoy Chardonnay. Cheers. 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 Really good. How many listeners are jealous of us right now? (laughs) We just go quiet to (laughs) taste wine. It's It's sweeter than I was expecting. You think it's sweet? I think it's like, it it is a Chardonnay, but it is like maybe a sweet Chardonnay. It's a kind of Chardonnay you could have on a nice day, hanging out outside. Yeah, like at a picnic. Yeah. A nice day at Griffith Park, right by Whitney's house. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I could also pair this with a lot of Miyoko's vegan cheese, Mm -hmm. which luckily we have today. Your snacks are so good. This is such a perfect combo. Yeah, um, I'm a big fan of that guacamole that comes from um, it's amazing. Bristol. It's so I good. need to go buy it. It's like, you know when you have guacamole from the store and you're like, I can make it better. So you're like, 
you make it better. But then you get bristles and you're like, I don't think I could make this better. No, I thought that you did make it. I know. I it didn't. feels very homemade. Yeah. Bristol does a good job. They make it like every day. It's like my go-to. And it's not too salty. But back to the wine. Back to the wine. <laughs> okay, so Melissa, what does it mean when wine is vegan? It means that it has no animal products in it and it has not been filtered through methods like isinglass, which a lot of alcohols have been filtered through. I knew you would know the answer. Which is basically <laughs> fish bladders. It's so gross. Yeah. I can't even believe that, pe- that that's how a lot of wine is made. It's, what is even the point of it's that? It's becoming more obsolete, I feel like. You do? It's like a filtration yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. Like they're starting to use like a centrifugal filtration system now. Yeah. I think it is. So they don't need the fish bladders. Yeah. Who even thought of that? So if it's the just cavern? organic, is it still possibly going through that filter? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Interesting. It kind of most likely is, unfortunately. Unless it's certified vegan, Mm -hmm. which Scout and Cellar is all certified vegan. Um, So (laughs) their mission is to discover unknown good wines and share it along the way. They have wines from all over the world. And for Food Heals Nation, they're giving 5% off six bottles, 10% off 12 bottles, an additional 5% for their wine clubs. So I've joined their wine club. It's so fun because they just ship it right to your door. And then you're not searching for Mm -hmm. what's vegan, what's organic, which is, I think, can be kind of hard to find in the store. No, it is. Like, um, Trader Joe's actually now has some of their bottles of wine are certified with, like, this little um, paper thing on the top that literally says vegan wine. So it's great. Really? Yeah. Wow. There's, like, a couple of brands that are doing it. I hope they all do. But it's so it's really easy for me when I go in there to get the vegan wine because, obviously, like, especially when we're doing the podcast, I need to be on brand. I need that vegan wine. It needs to be easy to find. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I remember Allison and I took the train to San Diego a few years ago for my birthday. And we were posting on Instagram story or something that we were drinking wine because we were in first class or whatever it was. And somebody was like, you know, the wine you're drinking isn't vegan. I was like, oh, no, I didn't even it didn't even occur to me because we were were having so much fun. So the nice thing is if, if a company like this is doing the work for you then you can take wine with you and, and take it on the train if you would like or yeah. or go to all these different settings and just be prepared with something that you know is meeting your ingredient standards. Yeah, I know. It's so true because we were on the train and like, you, you know, we're so conscious, but at the same time, we can miss things yep. all of the time. Or you get caught up in the moment. You're yeah. just having fun. I think that happens at a lot of events. People go and they just drink wine and they don't even think about where it's coming from. That still happens to me, even though I've been vegan for 15, yeah. however many years. And it's like someone was telling you that because you are the eco vegan gal online. And then the brand name is in our stories. And it was like <laughs> Sutter Home or something really yeah. common, you know. Yeah. And then, you know, it made me think, too, because I was like, wow, like, because we're, we're sitting on the train and in the business class, they literally come up to you and they're like, do you want a glass of wine? And you're like, of course I do. Yeah. I feel so special right now. It's like when you're on a plane. It's just like fun. Right. And we were traveling together. It was her birthday. But like, yeah, I, I don't even think about that mm-hmm. in those types of situations. So someone called it to our attention. And now I do think about yep. it. Yeah. You know, even on a plane. To be but then you don't have to think about it if it's just coming to your doorstep, which exactly. is so nice. If it's coming from Scout and Cellar, right. our new fave. Um, let's taste the red. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. What kind of red is this? Okay. Can you reach that bottle and tell us? <laughs> You're in charge hope now. I can pronounce it. I never know. <laughs> okay. This is just a cab. Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. Which I enjoy. So and let's what's, do it. And what's the Middle brand? Middle Jane. Middle Jane. And it's got the cute little dog pictures. It is. Beautiful little flower from Mendocino County. Um, it's from yeah, it's 2016. A really cute, it's a really like pretty bottle. And if you want to see pictures of all the bottles, they post them on Instagram at Varietal Group. And that's actually how we connected because we became friends on Instagram. And then we were just like commenting on all of each other's stuff. And then we just started, I don't remember who even messaged the other person first, but we were like, let's collaborate, you know? Love it. Yeah. They Cheers. must have detected Cheers. how much you love wine. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. I mean, I don't, I, I'm kind of obvious about it. I don't think it's a hard <laughs> thing to detect. Before I've even sipped it, it smells really good. Yeah. You got to give it a nice swirl. Really get your, your nose in there. I it? wish I was somebody who Ooh. knew how to describe wine better. It tastes <laughs> like cherries. <laughs> I can taste the aged oak. This actually <laughs> does smell like aged. It smells like a nice whiskey oh my gosh melissa i think you're right like it was aged in something mm. in a whiskey barrel yeah i don't know if it was but i actually love the smell mm-hmm. 
What do you think of the smell? I keep making her smell. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it it smells very sweet, like chocolatey or something. Like kind it's of kind of like a dessert Ooh. smell to it. I like that. It's Ooh, not smoky. a dessert. It's not a dessert wine, but I can smell. Yeah, yeah. it's not. I, I wouldn't expect it to taste like a dessert wine, but it kind of smells like a sweet treat. Mm. It kind of tastes like a smoky whiskey in a way too. It is so good. So I just want to let Food Heals Nation know if you're listening and you want to taste these wines with us, you can just reach out to Varietal Group on Instagram or you can go to their website because everything that they promote is from all over the world, organic, biodynamic and vegan and also has no sugar added and low sulfites. And nice. female owned, I'm guessing? Yes. All right. So all the wines are independently tested to ensure no synthetic additives or pesticides are included. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. Scout and Cellar, my new favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and you get to taste wines from all, it's not just one brand. You get to taste all kinds of different brands. Right. So Which is really fun. fun, especially if you have parties or if you just mm-hmm. like to unwind at the end of the day with wine. Just knowing that you're going to get it at your home and you don't have to do any work. That's so nice. Exactly. So yay. All right. Well, let's get into the episode. We're going to talk about healthy travel tips for Food Heals Nation and just share some of our favorite things. But we have an icebreaker game. Oh, man. So let's Vince, do it. Our producer is going to help us play. Um, okay, so here's how the game works. We each wrote down something interesting about ourselves that everyone else hopefully does not know. And then we have to guess is what? Have you told him he has to come and read it on, on the mic? Vince, are you coming over? Um, it's up to you. You can hear it. <laughs> you can hear it from here, but if you want me to I kind of like if he's in the background because it sounds like I'm a an anonymous person in the distance. <laughs> he's like, don't put me on camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. The first one is, I used to be the stand-in for an Oscar-nominated actress. Oh. Second one, I wanted to be a professional dancer when I was a preteen. Mm. I love to hip-hop dance. Lots of dancers in the house. I know. <laughs> and the last one is, I didn't lose my virginity until 19 with someone I dated for six months. <laughs> wow. Ooh. That's fun. These are amazing. Oh, my God. All right. Good. Okay. We're good at this game already. I know. I'm looking at all of you like, who's the hip hop dancer? (laughs) I know I've danced with all of you, but I'm like, who is hip hop? I'm looking at one of you two. I'm like, this is either Melissa or Erica is the the hip hop dancer. I mean, me and Erica rap. We rap together. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes we do. We rap together sometimes. One day maybe we'll share the video with Food Heals Nation that was taken at a conference of us rapping. But if any of my news yes. listeners hear this, it's going to be surprising. <laughs> I'm like serious journalist. <laughs> oh, but I rap. It's fine. <laughs> You're one of my favorite rappers. Okay, what were the other ones? So there was I Love to Hip Hop Dance. I wanted to be a professional dancer when I was a preteen. That's like all of us. I used to be a stand-in, Oscar-nominated actress. Okay, you're a journalist. No, I feel like that's you. I know, I feel like that's you <laughs> too. I was going to say it was Erica, but you gave yourself away because you mentioned the that you weren't the dancer, so that ruled out two of them for you. Oh, so. damn, I lose my own yeah. game. <laughs> I feel like the stand-in because I know so, that you used to do like background work. I feel like so. I've heard this from you yeah. as like a... A two truths and a lie game that we've played in the past. I know we hang out too much. (laughs) Okay, just gave it away. So we know one is given away. Tell us the story now. Okay. Yeah, who was it? It was Michelle Williams. Ooh, yeah, you're a good for Dawson's Creek. Was it Dawson's Creek? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because it was filmed in Wilmington, where I went to college for film. And so, in our our, at the time, um, North Carolina had the biggest tax incentives after New York and LA. So we were making tons of movies, tons of films, and it was all happening in my small town of Wilmington, where I went to college that had a huge film program. So all of us that were in the film program, which was a small group of people, got opportunities to work on sets of all of these movies. It was an incredible time and it doesn't exist anymore and that really saddens me because like the you know governor changed the tax incentives like so they don't have it anymore so they but is that actually fun to 
be a standing? Because don't you just basically stand around for 12 hours? Is what I've heard. You do. So it's a combination of glamour and boredom. Right. Because when you feel glamorous is when they are lighting you and you, everyone's eyes are on you and they're like, okay, please walk from point A to point B and they call second team and you're like, I'm second team and you feel all VIP because you're not an extra. You're not getting the people coffee, which I've done all of the above. I was a PA, so I would get like the actors and the, and the stand, other stand-ins like coffee and stuff and then I was an extra where you're just like herded like cattle and like those are not as glamorous as being a stand-in, which is also very boring for many hours. And this was before we had cell phones. So it's not like I was sitting there like Googling and texting and watching YouTube videos, which is probably what everyone on set does now. <laughs> we had nothing to do. Oh my God. So it would read be, a book. Yeah. It would I read a lot of books, but it would go from glamour and fun to like absolute boredom. <laughs> All right, you guys got me. What are the other three that we still have to get? I love to hip hop dance. I wanted to be a professional dancer when I was a preteen, and I didn't lose my virginity until 19 with someone I dated for six months. I was going to say, I think Erica's the hip-hop dancer. Yeah, I think so, too. And now I think you're the hip-hop dancer because you accused Erica. <laughs> oh, that would have been really smart, but I, I also... She's pretty smart. Melissa gave it away, too, because you made a face, and I was like, no, nope, What face her. did she make? I missed She it. made, like, a, no, that's not me face, <laughs> unless she was also trying to So then did you want to be a professional really dancer when really you were, were a preteen? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, I think I think it's given up. Like it, we can say now, right? Yeah. Yes, I like to hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why would that surprise people about you? I think that because, like, I'm you know I'm the journalist. She's a you hardcore don't think journalist. About yeah. um, how much fun you have? Yeah, and just. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like hip hop dance is just not something that you would think when you look at me. <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. I mean, I think of it when I look at you. Okay, well, good. I'm glad. But that's because I know you. But if I had, before I knew you well, like the first time we met, I may not have thought that about you. I want to hip hop dance with you. I know. No, let's and do it. Let's do I was it. on the whole like dance team. I mean, I had the level of like college dance team kind of thing, but it's not like it's. Yeah. It's not like it's that serious. It's more <laughs> that I just enjoy it. It's fun. Okay, so we've got the hip hop dancer. So we have two left. So lost their virginity and wanted to be a dancer. So I definitely think Whitney is the lost your virginity. Does anyone second that? Oh no, Melissa. <laughs> well, but we can't answer. Because I know. Right. It's down yeah, to us. There's not enough. It's of down us. to us. Yeah, but you have to make an argument for what you're. You can make an argument. Try to convince us. Are we supposed oh, to I, do that? Like, this is really lying, and I cannot lie. <laughs> right. It's hard enough to like keep a straight face. Yeah. Well, now you, now that you told us that, then you can't argue because then we're so gonna know. Are we supposed to tell our answers now? No. Okay, <laughs> Melissa is. Oh, you're a dancer too. I don't fucking know because you have an acting background. You're the dancer. Your virginity. Final answer. Okay, so Food Hills Nation can't see who I'm pointing at. Okay, so my final answer might be different from Erica's, but mine is Whitney is the answer. You are virginity. What's your final answer? I'll go with that now because I feel like she would have jumped on on what I said before if that was true. Okay, ladies, reveal. You're right. You got it right. <laughs> oh my god, I did. <laughs> Yay! See, I was trying really hard not to jump because I, I too was really into hip hop dancing and oh. went and was on dance teams in college and high school, and really loved it. And I guess I gotta have a dance sesh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, but I'm because I'm introverted. I've I think probably part of the reason I didn't pursue it is it's like super embarrassed. I love dancing and I'm actually I feel like I'm really good at it. But it's like one of my natural gifts. But I'm performing in front of people, especially people I know. I will you will almost never see me dance in front of my mm. friends. But performing, if I'm performing in front of a crowd of people I don't know, that's much easier for me. And I just like have that natural desire to dance, but also the like shyness that not wanting to do it in front of anybody that knows me. I think a lot of people <laughs> could relate to that. I, I also think you have a good poker face. Because mm-hmm. I was like debating if that was you or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, Melissa gave it away from me because she reacted. As soon as you said the dancing, Melissa's like, no, not me. <laughs> so I knew she had to be the virgin. But before she gave that away, I was like, maybe that was you. I thought maybe Erica was going to be the stand-in. Uh-huh. And then Allison, I thought you were the stand-in at first. Yeah, I thought th- that would have made more sense. But I also was debating because 
because I knew your background. So. Yeah, I like to dance and sing, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm pretty sure we've played that game, Two Truths and a Lie, <laughs> and that was one of your, like, truths that could have been a lie. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. We so did. I was like, that sounds familiar. We played this game at our podcasting conference, yeah. so <laughs> Erica's heard some of my truths. We only have so many that are, like, good enough to be possibly a lie. Right, right? exactly, Yeah. <laughs> Okay, what's your story? I mean, I don't really have a story. <laughs> She's that, like, that's it, everyone. That, I mean, when I like would tell people like, oh yeah, I, you know, I, my first serious boyfriend, we dated for six months, and then I finally lost my virginity to him. People are like, you didn't lose your virginity till nineteen. I feel I like, like that's that's not, a, yeah, yeah, that's not okay. like you know thirty or I'm something. I'm hanging around some weirdos, yeah. yeah. bad, but it's you know, yeah. yeah. I, I feel think like, I was eighteen. I think I was okay. twenty. Yeah. Nice. I was definitely, I felt like I was pushing the age, like, for my yeah. Yeah. losing it, so. I, was I guess like, that's why it didn't surprise, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, because 18 was, like, in the middle, like, half my friends yeah. had, half of them hadn't, so exactly. I felt, like, 18, 19, I feel like it's normal, but I mean. You're more my people, then. Maybe kids yeah. today, like, I don't know what the <laughs> no. kids today are doing. <laughs> I don't know who you grew up with, those sluts over there. I know, right? Like, 14. I was like, do you have (laughs) boobs yet? Like, what are you doing? But that, isn't that so? I find that so interesting that we judge other people based on like their sexual experience. You know, yeah. I, I wish like they're judging as much as just. Or at least I don't feel like I'm judging. It's just like, oh, that's interesting. Like, what what was your experience? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, our culture right. I feel yeah. Like yeah. judges. Right, right, right. Like, not only do we have things like slut shaming, but there's there's so much shame in our culture about uh, sexual behavior. And the older I get, the more I'm fascinated by that because it was definitely. I think part of the reason that I waited was because my mom raised me. She she was like instilling the shame around sexuality for me, like probably because of the way that she was raised. Mm-hmm. So I just felt like, oh, I wanted to respect myself and wait as long as I could. I wasn't in a rush and I wanted to try to be with the right guy and all that stuff. And, and I feel like our culture has that. But then there's also the side of our culture that can tend to be a little bit more promiscuous and okay, and embracing sexuality. So I bet you it's actually very confusing to be a teenager right now because there's so many mixed messages. A lot, especially in the U.S., like there's a lot of very religious people in the U.S. that have these belief systems around sexuality. And then there's people that are like, no, but we live in this free time and you should be able to express your sexuality however you want. Yeah, because so. it goes both ways of people being like, oh, you like you waited how long? Like you're still right. like, so there's both. Yeah, both sides of it, you know, and it's like mm-hmm. most things where you almost you have to be this, but not too much of that. And right. there's always kind of that back and forth. I knew this game was going to stimulate good conversation. <laughs> I actually lied about it. I, it's funny. It's bringing back this memory of being in college before, when I was still a virgin. This girl, <laughs> I can't believe, she, I, I imagine that she believed me, but I had the silliest lie. She's like, well, how many guys have you slept with? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I lost count. Or like, <laughs> and I feel like she believed me. And at the time I was like, wow, I can't believe she believed me. But like, I didn't want to admit to her that I had, I was still a virgin. Yeah. So I tried to play it off because I also didn't like have a number that I would share. <laughs> so, it's just so funny how like when you're younger too, there's those two sides of being embarrassed if you have or haven't. 100%. All right, Food Heals Nation, I hope you're enjoying these travel stories. I know I am. Next week, we're sharing all our travel tips, but here's one tip I just couldn't wait to share. Wherever you're going, whether business or pleasure, pack your greens. You never know what the situation is going to be when you land somewhere. Will there be healthy food options? Is there a juice bar or a health food store? Depending on where your destination is, there could be no healthy options. So that's why I always travel with Organifi. The Organifi green juice powder infused with coconut and ashwagandha is literally my go-to. You can mix your greens right into water or juice and get all the nutrients you need to power through your day, curb that jet lag, and jumpstart your energy. When you wake up and drink a glass of Organifi green juice, you kickstart the body's process of daily detoxing, producing natural energy and managing stress. Who doesn't want that? When I went to South Dakota, I made this road trip across the country. There were almost no healthy food options. Most beautiful place ever. And I couldn't eat Food Heals Nation. I'm telling you, at one of the dinners, I had to eat bread with a piece of tomato on top because there were just no healthy vegan food options. 
thank God I had my Organifi to get the nutrition I needed on that road trip. And of course, you know, Organifi has a special offer for Food Heals Nation listeners. Go to Organifi.com slash Food Heals and get 20% off your first order. Try it and let me know how you like it. All right, now back to our crazy travel stories with Melissa, Erica, and Whitney. You're listening to the Food Hills Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. So part two of the getting to know you game, which is on topic with our brand, is (laughs) a crazy travel story. So Vince, take it away. (laughs) All right. The first one is I went on a hiking trip in Arizona and got lost in the desert for hours with no signal or GPS. Oh, God. (laughs) Yeah. I got scammed at the airport and almost didn't make it out of Mexico. Oh. This one's the best one. (laughs) Years ago in Portland, I couldn't poop for days. (laughs) And my friend said to drink a latte, so I had my first latte ever. Best poop ever. (laughs) And I went skydiving over Australia. Ooh. These are good. You were just in Australia, but you weren't posting about skydiving. (laughs) I I feel very confident about one of them. I do not feel confident. I have no idea. Shoot. Okay. I think Whitney might know mine because she like knows me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know her. Yeah. Okay. So you're well, very I'm thinking about since what? you talked about virginity in the first one that maybe you talked about pooping in the next one. <laughs> <laughs> when did Melissa have her first latte? <laughs> hmm. Okay. What were the other two? The problem is as soon as you guess, you know that that's not yours. Right. No, you can lie. Oh, right. Just accuse someone else of yours. Do it right now and then we'll know what's hers. <laughs> Okay, I'm already forgetting. I went on a hiking trip in Arizona and got lost in the desert for hours with no cell signal or GPS. Erica. I got scammed at the airport and almost didn't make it out of Mexico. Whitney. Skydiving in Australia. Melissa. And couldn't poop in Portland. Melissa. (laughs) (laughs) Well, both of those are not mine. (laughs) Okay, I'm wrong? Am I wrong? Well, I don't know which one. You said two. Yeah. So She's yeah, Allie, kick drunk. it off. Make an make an official yes. guess. I just okay. I just did. Yeah, you. Did. She did do. I okay. just did. Okay. Did I get anything right? I don't know. How do we do this? <laughs> I know this is this is a tough one. Okay, maybe I didn't get any right. I, I guess think... Mel- I guessed Melissa for pooping. Okay, I I, was, I will second. That. I s- I third that. Okay, <laughs> it's me. Yeah. <laughs> I applaud your vulnerability in this I game. I know. You're no, very I talk vulnerable. about poop all the time. No, I my- know. I love how she says that. It actually, like, makes me want to be like be more open about talking about it because yeah. that's another thing. Like, speaking of shame, that's like another thing. That, like, it's like there's shame associated with talking about bowel movements mm-hmm. or like anything going, you know, related to that. So, yeah. I, it like it's empowering when somebody yeah. else talks about it. I'm like, yeah. wow, that's cool. I like that. I, go ahead. I was say I had it in my dating profile, like online. <laughs> When my boyfriend messaged me, like he knew what he was signing up for. I was like, I will talk about poop in our relationship, and you just need to be okay with that. I love that. I love that. You that. You totally stood out, and it oh worked. You got a boyfriend out of it. We've been dating for almost four years, and yeah. we talk about our poop together all yeah, the time. Yeah, I love that. I love it when Melissa tells me stories like of their conversations. I'm like, this is the best because I don't. I guess some guys I've dated I've talked about that with, but it, it, yeah. it takes a lot of bravery for me. I didn't even talk about my husband about this. So <laughs> I, I need some lessons here. What am I missing? <laughs> I'm like I'll total. I am the opposite. Where even with my husband, I like try to leave that out. Where I'm just like, let's like keep it, keep it, keep, keep it, sexy. it clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to ask: having your first latte in Portland, Oregon, is the best place to have it. Yes. I used to live in Portland, and the coffee is amazing. Okay. So how was your first latte? It was good. It was at Stumptown. Um, I had Stumptown, never had Stumptown yes, before. It started, so Stumptown was actually a nickname for Portland. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, There's like a whole story about... Tree Stump. Tree Stump, yeah. <laughs> but now they expanded to New York and all of these places in, LA. in California. Yeah, yeah so I, it's like one of my favorite coffees. It was so good. This was like, I think like almost seven years ago. What type of milk? So, it was vegan. I don't remember. It's a good question. Probably probably, it, that many seven years ago, like probably almond, let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> or soy. soy. Maybe soy. Yeah. But I feel like Portland would have been an almond milk city back yeah. then. That's true. Yeah. They were very forward thinking. <laughs> Aren't they the number one vegan city? 
Probably. They're amazing. It's like one of my favorite cities. Okay, so amazing. what made you drink the latte? <laughs> my friend telling me, like, we were staying at a hotel, like the one that the president stay at in downtown, and the Stumptown was in the ground level of the hotel. Uh-huh. So he was like, just go down there and, like, get a latte. I was like, that's going to help me poop? And they're like, yes. Yes. And I was like, all right. So I got, like, this vanilla latte. I was like, this is effing delicious. <laughs> and then I was like, I got to go to the bathroom. I'll see you guys later. Why like, had you never had a latte before? I don't know. I had maybe had, like, really crappy ones. Yeah. But I never had one Pun that, like... intended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. And then I had this... Like, I had never had a good one that, like... Got my bowels moving. Yeah. And like, you know, you, you need tr- a nice strong one. <laughs> yeah. I needed to like get all the voodoo donuts out of me. Oh, oh yeah. that's and overrated, by the way. Not seven years ago, okay. but now it is. Yeah. yeah. There all weren't right. many good vegan donuts back then. Oh, now there's so many. So maybe so since many. we've, Melissa, we know who, what hers is, she should make the next okay. guess. Nice, nice. Okay. Okay. Who do you want to accuse? So Arizona, Mexico, skydiving. I think you're skydiving. And I think. You're Arizona. And what what was the other one? I'm going to say. Hiking. Got scammed in Mexico. I think you're Mexico. Oh, I'm going oh, to I'm gonna second skydiving. I'm going to third it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> How do you know? I don't know. Process really of elimination. Yeah. And I know yeah. you have not. I just know that they haven't. That's uh, all. <laughs> well, that'll give it away. Well, for first sure. of all, you're wrong because I showed you my video skydiving. Yeah, but not in Australia. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you know oh, that okay. I didn't do yes. it in Australia. Got it. But you yeah, I thought you were going to accuse me because I literally just went to Australia. But I, that's that's I know. I was hoping that would throw people off. That's a good <laughs> one. Oh, that is that was smart. And yeah. I have been to Australia, and you haven't, Melissa. No. So three out of the four of us have been to right. Australia. Oh. But only one Strategy of us people. went skydiving in Australia. Yeah, I, right. I did not do that. I was actually supposed to go in New Zealand, but it was too windy, and so we had to push it off, and then I went over Cairns, wow. where there's like the Great Barrier Reef and everything, Whoa. before it started to die because of climate change. But <laughs> A whole yeah, other no, podcast. Was, I know. <laughs> but I always kind of think of it as like that moment that you decide, like you could be really worried about something, but you're deciding, if I'm going to do this, then it's pointless to worry about right. it. Right, yeah. Like just... Go for it, yes. you know? And so I, like, made a decision when I was going to do it that being stressed out about it was not going to help me. So I just totally embraced it and did it. And it's hilarious to look back. I I studied abroad in Australia. I probably gained about 15 pounds at the time. <laughs> and so my cheeks are flopping like there's no tomorrow in this video. <laughs> like, it is incredible when you're falling from the sky for a minute and your your cheeks just really go yeah. out. Of it. Like, <laughs> it's true. It's not so a flattering I don't, look. I don't show people that video i actually yeah. don't even think my husband's seen it oh um, <laughs> that's the first step into getting to the level of poop that you want to have yeah <laughs> you gotta show that skydiving video um not that i wouldn't show him but <laughs> but yeah no it was a really cool experience one of those things that like i'm good doing it once yeah but it, it's fun to be able to kind of like think back on that experience of like going for something and you know just what it was like so yes it was good it was a good one. Oh, maybe i'll go yeah, I feel like it's it's good to do once. I will yeah. say there was a moment when I was I feel like I wasn't situated right after he pulled the parachute. Yeah. And I had to kind of I was like stay calm. I don't know what's happening. And it was a little terrifying, but then he was like, "Okay, we're good." So I still to this day don't really know if something went wrong or not. But I'm just gonna say that it didn't. It's fine. Oh my right. Gosh. And right before he basically pushed me out of the plane cuz I'm attached to somebody He was like, don't go before I tell you or you'll die. And I was like, okay, thanks. I'm not planning on it. (laughs) I can't believe he said that to you. I know. It was a very odd thing. But yeah, it was it's a cool experience. It is. Have you been skydiving, Allie? Nope. And I know Melissa hasn't. Mm -mm. I really feel like I I feel like I wish more people would would be willing to try it because it is such an exhilarating experience. You just have to find the courage to do it like you said and you just have to not worry about it yeah and i was actually i was watching it uh, on some tv show uh, there was skydiving recently and i was thinking back like you know something could go horribly wrong because you're just like strapped in with these like thin you know yeah it seems like they could just slip off or something could malfunction absolutely but you just have to let go and and realize i guess if you were gonna die maybe it's really <laughs> morbid but like when you have like a heart attack or something while you were falling like I, I don't even know if you would feel the impact right. of, like, you know what I mean? So how bad could it be to die from a skydiving accident? Like, 
I feel like you die in bliss. Yeah, you probably. I mean, I don't know about that. (laughs) I mean, I guess like the impact you would go so fat. It's not like you would feel any. I mean, the reality is anything can happen when you're driving down the street or skydiving. So you know, if it's something that you want to do, doing it at least once was was a good experience. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. We have two more people left and two more guesses. So you guys now have to vote on us. Yeah, who's Oh, who? man. Okay, so we're about to be hiking and getting scammed in Mexico. Does Vince need to read them again? No, I think we're good. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say... Hiking, Mexico. That's my guess. What do you think? Hiking, Mexico. My guess. So Whitney hiking, Ali, Mexico. I second that. You would be correct. Yeah. <laughs> oh 100% job. score all oh around. I want to hear the Mexico story. I want to hear the hiking story. Uh-huh. I can't bl- Have I... Did I tell you this, Melissa? No. Oh, that's so funny. Okay, what happened? I was actually with Jason, my friend and now business partner, and we won the lottery to go to a really exclusive part of Arizona. You have to actually put your name in a lottery and pay money. And it's like a luck of the draw type of thing. And some people will apply over and over and over again and never get chosen to go hike in this area called The Wave. And so it was super exciting, and we went up there just to go hike in this area, and we thought we were prepared with everything, but the biggest thing that we didn't have was, like, a professional GPS device, and and Jason thought, oh, it's fine, we'll have our phones, and we'll have um, a compass, right, and a map, but it turns out the map that they give you and the instructions I found online were not strong enough. They were very vague. Let's this say. is my worst nightmare. And so we got in there. It, we got lost in the very beginning, but it was daylight. We had plenty of time. There were people there. There was only like 40 people or so in this hiking area each day. So, and, and it's so large that you don't see very many people. You're very spread out. So you'll see someone in the distance. You might see some footprints, but for the most part, you're kind of on your own. And you have to find your way to this area called the wave which is incredible so we got lost in the very beginning of the day but we had so much energy and time it wasn't that big of a deal and then we finally got to the wave but it was sunset and we saw everybody like leaving in the distance but we didn't worry that much and we as we were walking back to the car we got lost and we were like a half an hour away from the car and we could not find our way back. And oh, the God. sun went down. We were the only ones there. And we basically had to use our intuition to get back to the car. That was the only because there was no no GPS signal. The compass we couldn't understand. There were no markers that could identify the path back to the car. And I would so, have died in the woods that night. Yeah, <laughs> we we were we had been out there for like. 10 hours or so at this point. So we were tired. It was the night. We were scared. There was no one around. There's nowhere, no signs. Like we we were basically on our own and we were very lucky to find our way out of there. This is literally my worst nightmare. (laughs) (laughs) This is like where horror movies happen. Yeah, it really felt, I mean, I I started crying. I thought I was going to have a panic attack. It was, it was terrifying. Well, my story is a little lighter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the the lesson there is like you you know you never can be too prepared for those things, and not to take too many risks when you're in a situation like that. Because I mean, I don't think we were actually going to die. We might have had to like stay the night and wait till somebody came the next day. But I've covered a lot of stories like that. Yeah, <laughs> I would have I would have freaked out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I think staying the night there would have been very challenging. And it's like we're so used to our cell phones and we're so reliant on them. And so when you don't have service and there's nothing you can do to get yourself out of that situation, it's like... (laughs) Exactly. There's no, like, park rangers around. It's Mm -hmm. a very remote... I don't know if it's still like that. This was, like, in 2013, I think, when we did this. It's probably the same. And and they tell you, you go at your own risk. People have died there because they've gotten too hot during the day. I mean, it's really... They give you all these precautions for setting you up. But at the end of the day, you're... On your own, yeah. at your own risk. Oh, my gosh. Well, on a lighter note. Yeah, what's the Mexico story? Well, the first <laughs> time I ever went to Mexico, I um, basically was with Dan, and my husband, and we show up in the airport, and we're like, oh, we need to find our car service. And so we're walking through the airport. I don't remember the car service was, but let's say it's called ABC. So they're like, oh, what's your car service? And I'm like, ABC. They're like, right here, ma'am. Okay. I had no idea this was a scam. But 
They pull you over to a desk, yep. and then they're like, oh, let me call your driver. And they're like, oh, he'll be right out. Um, but while while we're getting your driver, let us let you know a little bit about this experience that we have that we want to give to you. And you're like, oh, okay. No. And oh, so no. Um, the whole time, so the woman is telling us about how um, the hotel that we are going to is owned by Spain. And don't we want to give back to the Mexican economy next time we're here by staying at a Mexican-owned hotel? And we're like, of course we do. Absolutely. You know, she's playing to all of, mm-hmm. you know, the, the our, our sympathetic, you know, person that's like, yes, we want to support the, the Mexican economy, of course. So she's like, all right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to invite you. We're going to put you up and we're going to have you um, come to this brunch. There is going to be food, alcohol. You've, we've got jet skis. We've got all of the things. So anything you want to sign up for, you can sign up for now or you can sign up there. We're going to pick you up and we're going to come and get you, you know, whichever date you choose. So we're like choosing the date. We're like waiting for the car. And this is taking quite a while. And Dan's all about it. And my red flags start to go up. And I'm like, I don't like this girl. Her name is Rosa Rojas. And I'm like, I don't like Rosa Rojas. So here I I start Googling Rosa Rojas. And I didn't find anything while we were standing there. And I decided to walk outside. And I found the guy. He's like, hi, we've been waiting for you for 30 minutes. So the car service has been waiting for us while we're being taken advantage in the airport by the woman who's basically like, you know, trying to sell us on something. So we go, we're like, bye. We get in the car and we go to our hotel. And Dan's like, no, I think we should do it. Like, it sounds great. Let's support the local Mexican economy, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, this is a scam. I don't know what it is. It's something. So finally, Google becomes our friend. And that night, we found on Facebook someone posting about Rosa Rojas. Did anyone run into Rosa Rojas at the airport? And everyone's like, yes, it's a timeshare scam. Mm -hmm. They get you drunk. They don't let you leave. No cab will pick you up because they're all in on it. Okay. Yep. (laughs) Oh, my God. So thank God that we discovered it because, you know, you get me drunk and talk about a timeshare, Ali's going to buy. (laughs) <laughs> oh no so luckily we didn't get scammed into it and now I'm you know much more conscious of what's going on but the problem is is that they, she shows you the government badge she's yep. very convincing you're in the airport you're inside the airport you're was not on the street Cabo? corner where yeah, was, it was it we were on our way to Los Cabos that's yes. crazy it's they're, they're known it for that person. yeah and they yeah. warned this exact same thing happened to me and I was warned and I still yeah. <laughs> fell into it because they're so convincing they're so good they come up and they're so so friendly and helpful and they pretend to call your car service right. mm-hmm. and so you're just sitting there thinking oh of course they're calling and I remember the guy got on the phone and he's like oh yes like I have Whitney here and he, he said something and I was like there's something and my intuition was like something's not right Right. but he's still they're, they're just very convincing because they do this all day every day yeah. and yeah they, they bring you on this whole thing and then then if your intuition you know hits you strong enough you start to realize something's not right and so it's not until you you have to go outside of the airport to find the correct person Mm -hmm. and then there's also like a line of people trying to like get you to take their cab or whatever it's very intense yeah and i wonder how many people fall for this and like get in these bad situations apparently a lot because in the facebook group that we had found back then i couldn't tell you what it was now but all of these people had stories they were like we got drunk we bought the timeshare (gasps) you know and they were like telling us their stories now we can't get out of it and so travel tip number one of this podcast (laughs) is don't get yourself sucked into one of these things find out exactly where your driver needs to meet you find out you know any of the things that could take you away and don't trust anyone except the very person that you have made the arrangements with because Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm very wary but I'm also very trusting and so if you're like me you know you might fall into something like this like Whitney and I almost did my actual tip for that is the mistake that I made is when they greeted me I told them that what hotel I was staying I was I said I said Mm -hmm. oh I'm staying at blah blah blah, whatever the hotel was called yeah are you the right person and they of course they say oh yes we are so to avoid it you'll just wait for them to introduce themselves to you because they won't know what hotel you're staying at. great point so you can say oh who are you and and what hotel are you with and keep asking them do not get give your information because that's how they kind of manipulate you to think that they're the right person it's like the fake psychics or like the the people that prey on your on your body language and, and and say throw things out there so you're like yes yeah you know and it's like oh it's scary exactly so don't give away too much information and right. that that's that'll help you a little, at least a little Good tip. Thanks, ladies. Well, we have a surprise for Food Heals Nation because Melissa, who we love, has to go. <laughs> but we have a new guest to take her place. <laughs> Who doesn't Leslie. even know she's about to be a guest? <laughs> <laughs> 
So thanks for being here, Melissa. Thanks for having me. It was fun. I'm glad we got to talk about my virginity and my poops. Yes. <laughs> 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 Leslie, you missed a lot. Away. Is this what we're talking about today? <laughs> Leslie, you have big shoes to fill. Come on no, over. <laughs> I do have big feet. <laughs> All right, Food Heals Nation, I hope you enjoyed those travel stories. And next week, Whitney, Erica, and I are joined by Leslie Durso to provide our best healthy vegan travel tips. And then in the third installment, I'm taking you with me to Puerto Rico, Food Heals Nation. But if you can't wait till next week, I wanted to leave you with some of my top travel tips right now. Number one is to get a hotel with a fridge, (laughs) not a mini fridge, Food Heals Nation. But even if you don't have a car, there might be a grocery delivery service like an Instacart that can bring you everything you need just for a small fee. You know, when I was in Philadelphia, I did this. I was at Podcast Movement. I had no car. I had no time. So I just had Instacart deliver me organic vegan groceries. They're not sponsoring this. I'm just saying that they're a great option wherever you are. You can look up what's the local delivery service that can come to you. So I stocked the fridge. I had tomatoes, hummus, avocado, Miyoko's vegan cheese, grapes, and I would just have people over for wine and cheese. And then I had all these healthy options for whenever I needed a snack on the go. Or if dinner didn't have a lot of options and I had a very small meal, then I would have something when I got back to the room. Um, My next tip is to bring your vitamin travel kit. So instead of taking all of your massive amounts of bottles of vitamins, I mean, I have massive amounts. I don't know about you, but there are these little circular travel pill holders that you can buy and store all of your various vitamins in a compact way. It's really great for packing. I have two of these and I actually didn't know what they were called. And apparently neither does Amazon. So I looked it up and it just said travel pill, vitamin, medication, holder, dispenser, organizer, storage. I can't make that up. I think they just put in the keywords for people like me who are like, I don't know what this is called, but I need it. So that's how I found it. But we'll make sure um, Mel will put a link in the show notes for exactly what I'm talking about. But whatever it's called, just get one of those guys and pack in your VIP vitamins. Some vitamins I personally never leave home without are B12, vitamin C, my probiotics, my melatonin for getting to sleep, and my oxy powder. You can only get that from Global Healing Center. And don't forget the discount code for that is foodheal 17 So we'll link to one of these medication holder thingies in the show notes. But let's just say it's an easy, compact way to travel with your essential vitamins without bringing all those bottles because there's no need for that. You can also travel with CBD. So I love CBD because it combats anxiety while traveling. It helps with jet lag. And I'd much rather take something natural to help me kind of fall asleep, plus some melatonin, rather than pollute my body with like a sleeping pill. So you know that I love CBD Fountain. You know Susie is the founder. And so she only sources quality, organic, great products. So you can go to cbdfountain.com and use the coupon code FOODHEALS to get your discount on CBD. Uh, That's a must have when I travel. Don't forget to pack your greens. You know that 92% of Americans have a vitamin deficiency. So not only do we need to be boosting our energy, cleansing our body, and feeling amazing with our greens on the daily basis, but it's really, really imperative when we travel because our immune systems are not being boosted naturally when we're in the car, we're on a plane, or we're losing sleep, or we're getting jet lag. It's not conducive to health. So we've got to pack our greens. So I take my Organifi green juice to go powders. It helps me kickstart my body's process of detoxing, giving me natural energy, managing my stress, and it tastes good. I just mix it in some water or some juice um, wherever I am. It's easy. It's something that you can have on the plane. You just get a little water bottle, shake it up, or get a juice at the airport. You know, however you want to get the greens in, get them in, and it's going to help with all of the things. And if you are drinking, my next tip is to choose your drinks wisely. Food Heals Nation, you know, wine is uh, my go-to. You all know that. But a lot of times it's full of sulfites and things that aren't conducive to healing, aren't conducive to health, and are not boosting the immune system. Yes, red wine can be good for the heart, sure. There are health benefits to wine, but you really got to know where your wine is coming from, where your alcohol is coming from. 
So I know my friends at Varietal Group and Scout and Cellar have got you covered. Alicia sent us those organic vegan biodynamic wines that we tasted in today's episode, and we're going to have Leslie taste next week. But look for something that's organic, biodynamic, and vegan, and that's going to be your healthiest option. Look, it's not going to be available at every single bar, but nice restaurants are going to have it. I've shipped things to where I was going. So you can get a company like Scout and Cellar to do that for you because they only have clean crafted wines that are grown naturally, no synthetic pesticides, no added sugars, no non-organic chemicals, you know, all that stuff that's added to traditional wine that we don't need. So if you're interested in Scout and Cellar, they're going to give you 5% off six bottles, 10% off 12 bottles, 5% off wine club. So you can check that out at scoutandcellar.com. And yeah, when you're traveling, just try to choose organic, vegan, biodynamic. And when it comes to liquor, I will say that I asked Dr. Stephen Cabral, my favorite holistic functional medicine doctor, and he actually said that the cleanest type of liquor is actually tequila. So think about that if you're ordering those mixed drinks when you're on vacation. And my last tip is to megadose on vitamin C. It boosts the immune system. It makes you feel better. It is something that I do whenever I am home, but also when I'm traveling, I usually double or triple my dose. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm not your functional medicine doctor, so I'm not going to tell you how much to take. But look at what you're taking now and try adding in a little bit more, small amounts at a time, and see how you feel. Because the good thing about vitamin C is it's water-soluble, so you can't overdose on it. What happens is the extra vitamins that you don't absorb, the nutrients you don't absorb, you're just going to pee out. So it's no big deal to take a little extra. So try it out. You know, there could be a few side effects, so do it slowly. But this is my number one tip for not getting sick is vitamin C. And yes, you can get it from orange juice and oranges, but orange juice in a typical diner is full of sugar. So that's not a great source of vitamin C. If you can get fresh squeezed orange juice wherever you're going, that's a great source. If you can get it in a smoothie from some organic oranges, you can just grab an orange or pack some oranges. Amazing source as well. And then, of course, I always bring my supplements with me. All right, Food Heals Nation, those are my top travel tips. You're going to hear all of our travel tips next week and part two of our travel series. And then in part three, I'm taking you with me to Puerto Rico. Stay tuned. See you next time, Food Heals Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately.